sake of the camera, yeah. he's very intelligent and he knows what he's talking about in his religion. We are Muslim, I'll be kind but to I you. can class myself as being ignorant. We might not know exactly everything, and we might not be able to answer everything. But there is a, there is some aware where we're coming from. Just to put that out there. Well, also, myself, I'm a revert from four weeks. Of, from it's been three weeks since I've reverted, but my knowledge speaks for itself. You know what I mean? Three weeks, not a long time. So I'm a revert, so just, I'm going to explain to this brother why. And you know, he can he can say what he wants to say. I'm open-minded. I'll listen to what this brother has to say. Unlike the Muslim apologists who are like sharks picking on young Christians and, 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 and making the mockery of them, when I'm talking to these guys here, I'm yes. going to treat them with respect and I'm not going to do that to you guys. Yeah? life as an atheist. Now, when you atheist, they don't believe in nothing. Believing in nothing means you don't even believe in yourself. Yeah, so this water bottle is made out of atoms, so am I. This is what atheists believe. So me and this water bottle has the same value. Me and my excretion have the same value. Me and this shoe have the same value. Okay, you can't differentiate good and bad. So if I was to kill someone, atheists don't believe in good or bad. Right or wrong? That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. So, now, when you get what, a minute, bro, what he was asking for before, Okay, no problem. Now, what brought me to Islam? Let me tell you something. I've been to church before Islam. I went to church. Yeah, I tried to get into. I, I tried to read the Bible. I wouldn't say I read it to the, to the maximum potential. I, I just couldn't get into it. The reason was the Old and New Testament. I just didn't like the fact that God changes mind. The all-knowing changes mind. Now that's that's just that's one thing that put me off. I went to Buddhism, whatever you could think of, literally. I, I, I went left and right, left and right. Just Islam was the one that I never I never looked into. I had this psychological neglect towards it. You know, I, I never knew what it was, and I never had a reason not to believe in it. Okay. Now you're gonna. Now the question is, why, why did you revert? Now, Allah, chal Allah challenges his humans. He says, he says from. From the, from the time of the establishment to now, he says to humans, I dare you to bring me a verse from my book or write a verse like mine from my book. No one to this mankind has done that. Therefore, I can say that's impossible. He's challenged us and we failed. So that's, that's, that's one thing. Okay, now this, the, the second thing for me is what brought me in is it has proof. Now you're going to say, what proof does it have? It predicts future events. Example, the Persian and Roman War, the fall of the Roman Empire. It predicts that. that then again, stuff like that, I was like, okay. I was like, now I've got more reason. And then you're going to ask me, brother, why don't you believe in the Bible? Why don't you believe in Jesus? My, my, my sincere answer is that Jesus, like people like um, Paul, Matthew, John, there's no chain of narration. However, for the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the chain of narration goes on and on and on and on and on and on, from the beginning to the end. Now, I looked upon these, and then I was like, wow, I was like, free. I was like, I was like, that's good enough for me. And you know what the fourth thing was? When I started reading the Quran, and when I started looking into it, I was like, mashallah, it, show, it shows us a way to live life. A spir spiritual and physical cleanseness. A physical way to live life without doing bad. You know, because I would do things and they would be bad and I wouldn't know. Hence why I was an atheist, because we can't differentiate what's good and bad. Do you know what I mean? So when I looked at Islam, it teaches us how to clean ourselves. It in depth teaches us how to clean ourselves even when we excrete. It even goes, sorry for being saying this, it even goes into fine detail on how to pleasure our women once they are our wives. It goes into fine detail about everything. And yeah, now for my brother, here, that's the reason I reverted to Islam. Now, I'm not against what he believes, 
in or anything. And I'm not here to say I'm more dominant and you're this and you're that. The, the, that's the reason I converted. That's my reason. And I'm going to let the brother speak now. It's, it's this guy, hat to you, 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 you credit to Islam. Thank you, my you know? I really respect Yeah, you credit to Islam. And this is the way it should be. Warm, friendly dialogue and respectful. And uh, I'm very impressed by you, sir, and by what you've said, yeah? So respect to you, respect to you guys, yeah? Uh, if you read uh, John chapter 3, Nic 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 Nicodemus was a Pharisee and he was very learned in the law and he came to Jesus and Jesus said to him, you must be born again. And the Greek for born again is born from above. So what he's saying is that the rabbis had lots of laws, lots of regulations. But Jesus is saying it's got to come from the heart that you've got to be born again, right? You need the spiritual birth. When the nat there's the natural man, but then when the Spirit of God comes in, he gives you the, the Spirit inside you where you can love God. So you're talking, and I respect that, about these regulations, but Jesus is talking a lot about the inward man, about being born again from above, the Spirit of God coming in. Secondly, the reason why I'm a Christian is because of the cross. You see, I'm guilty of my sin. We're all guilty. And no matter how many good deeds I do, I'm going to be judged by God. The wrath of God is on me. I can never know whether I've outdone those good deeds. But Jesus, when he died on that cross in Isaiah 53, it says he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes we healed. Christ was crushed on that cross for you and for me. And Jesus says it in John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That he, that, uh, John, he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And there's, a, there's an old hymn. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus. Vast, unmeasured, boundless, free, rolling as a mighty ocean in its fullness over me. And the love of God was shown on that cross, for Christ died for you and me. And without that sacrifice, there's no hope. Well, let me finish, let me finish. Without that sacrifice, there's no hope. And we've come from Manchester on a rainy day. <laughs> yeah. We come down. We come down. I never knew you came from Manchester. We knew it was rainy, but we come down. Why? Not to debate and win arguments. No, we come down. We come down. We come down because we care about people. We want people to know Jesus. That's beautiful. You know, you, um, that's, that's amazing that the brothers have come down all the way from Manchester. That's very, very far. Do you know I mean, so it goes to show that you really, true do, you really do believe in what you do, and you know, it's nice. I'm not, I'm not gonna say it's not nice. I'm not gonna disagree with what you, what you believe in. I believe in what I believe in for my person, for my reasons. You believe in what you believe in for your reasons. There's not, there's nothing right or there's nothing wrong. Do you know I mean, like, if Islam's true, I'm coming to mosque. If Christianity is true, you need to believe because in the Quran it says two things. It says Jesus didn't die, and it says God has no partners, right? So either, either, hey mate, uh, you do a great work, mate. Either the Quran says that Jesus didn't die, says God has no partners. The Bible says Jesus is the Son of God, and it says he died, right? Either the Quran is telling the truth, the Bible's telling lies, or the Bible's telling the truth. The Quran's telling lies. So, what, so they both can't be right. You know, you can be sincere. I can be sincere with the, that that tree is a woman. But it's not a woman. I might want it to be. So, if, so I, would, I would never become an atheist, right? But I'm always impressed by Muslims, people like yourself, yeah? Because of your passion, right? The Jews had a passion, but they were blinded because we need spiritual eyes. It's not just arguments. It's not just arguments. The Jews are whole different. They, but Jew, Jew, Jews have neglected the terms for our society. You know, they've got their own sections in hospitals. They've got their own schools. They've got their own shops. Jews, you know, Jews don't associate with us. I've got nothing against them, but Jews have, you would agree with this. They've neglected them. They're, they're not part of us. We can't say they're part of our society. Because they you know I mean? They're, everything they do, like, like I said, they have their own police. Everything is, everything is different. So how are they part of our society? That, that, yeah, you, I'm sure you. And one thing um, before my brother starts speaking, I want to say one thing as well. For me, like we could both can agree, Islam is the only religion that, under the Sharia law, it allows a Muslim to marry a Christian, 
or a Jewish woman. Do you know what I mean? Christianity doesn't do that. Uh, I'm not saying Christianity, I'm not trying to be dominant here. And um, brother, statistically speaking, this is true. The Bible says you will go to hell more than the Quran does. And if I was to take my phone out and Google it, this is true. I'm not trying to attack the Bible here. I'm just saying these are the reasons which drew me because I was having this you know, where do I go, left or right? You know how you watch Matrix, blue pool, red pool, what do I do? And you know what? Everything just led me to Islam. And like, that's, 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 you know what I mean? Oh, you're a good one. Allah My brother from another mother. What's your brother? This is my brother from another mother. Any time, any time. No problem. We love you, sir. We love you. Hey, man. Let's go. Let's go over there. Let's go over there. Let's go over there. Let's go over there. From the from the Bible's perspective, the the Jews are God's chosen people. Genesis 15, Abraham was given promise that he'd have a people as as many as the stars. And that was the Jews and the Gentiles. And in Romans 9, 10 and 11, it says that Israel will come back and there'll be a revival of Jewish people coming to the Messiah. So for Christianity, the Jews are important in the scheme of God's plan. Yeah? Can, can, can I just finish? And then uh, what was the other thing that you said? Well, I've got a quick question for yourself. Um, yeah. um, is, is that when they say the children of Israel? Is that, are they, um, is that what you meant? Yeah, because you've got, uh, you got. Because in the Quran it says children of Israel. Because I can't read Arabic, hence why I'm reading in English. Um, it says, "Oh, children of Israel." Now I'm asking you because I don't know. Um, is, when they say that, what are they referring to? Are they referring to? Um, can you... in, in the Bible, we believe there are messianic promises. One's Genesis 15, and then uh, you'll see David was given a messi messianic promise, and many of the prophets were expecting the Messiah, and the Messiah was for two people, the Gentiles, i.e. us, and you, and the Jews, Jewish people. And, and so we, we don't trace the line through Ishmael, we, we trace it through Jacob and, and, and the rest, yeah? So that's what all I'm saying I'm, is that that's the way we see it, yeah? So we pray that the Jewish people would come to, to know the Messiah, to, to find the Messiah. But, but for me, the reason why I'm a Christian, I was brought up in a Muslim area. Right? I was brought up as a Jehovah's Witness, but I never became a Jehovah's Witness. But I lived in a Muslim area and in Werner, uh, and my family was very respected by the Muslims. I'll give you an example. One day, uh, an elderly couple, Muslim couple, were walking in Werner, and they got mugged. And my brother, who's about six foot, who all the Muslims look to, ran and found the guys and uh, sorted them out, as it were. He weren't a Christian. <laughs> That's the beauty of humanity. Right? So the Muslim people in Werner respect our family, yeah? If you go to Werner and say, do you know Jack Burns, John Burns, they know us very well. Jimmy Burns, Jason Burns, so you know, they know us. The day, you all live among each other in peace. Yeah. You all accept each other for who you are. And that's what the Quran teaches and that's what the Bible teaches as well. Okay. So, I mean, we all accept each other for who we are. Um, I think I forgot to mention as well, I don't know if I did, um, but like one of the other reasons was I don't know if I said it, but I said the reasons why it, I went more with the uh, I went with the Quran and I reverted was the chain of narration as well from Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. The, ch the chain of narration we know who who everyone was, what they looked like. It's all described and it all leads. Do you know what I mean? It all goes on and on and on and on. When you Google it, you get it. But you know when it um can, can I, I, yeah of course yeah, yeah. yeah. Chain, chain of chain of narration. If Mansur was here. I would just say the Muslims have invented chain of narration, right? It's been invented. There's no chain of narration. The sources are late sources. They're, they're from Bukhari and people like that. They, they come hundreds of years after Muhammad. So this argument of chain of narration, there are actually verses, Bukhari verses that you can go and read where Muhammad even forgot his own verses. So if you've got a chain of narration, why would your own prophet forget? Now in the Quran it says he didn't forget, and but in Bukhari he said he forgot. And now you can say in Bukhari, well, it's not a, a, an authentic verse, it's not authentic in this Bukhari that Muhammad forgot. But if you've got chain of narration, it's in Bukhari that he forgot, right? Secondly, Bukhari had hundreds of thousands of hadiths that he threw away. We can't do history unless we have all the information. So why would he throw all these sources away? 
so you don't know much about that, so I'm not going to go into it. But what I'm saying is, to me, I, 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 what I try to do is put myself in the mind of the Muslim. And I've tried to look at your scholarship. I've tried to look at it from your point of view. But it, it, to me, it doesn't add up. I've tried to read PhDs on it and look at it from what you're saying. It, it doesn't add up. I know a few brothers who, um, who their knowledge is... So I, I wouldn't be the person to speak to that, but I'm sure you've probably heard of them, like Mohammed Jab. Oh yeah, he's yeah. a good guy, yeah. yeah and, well, you know, that's, maybe, that's someone who you could speak further upon. You said you don't believe. You know, he can provide you with why. So I can't. As I said, it's been three weeks and, you know, I'm, I'm still and learning. That, that's why I'm being easy on you. Yeah, man. For me... But you can understand me, can't you? I can understand, I can understand the argument that they present and why you believe that. To me, I'm saying as a Westerner, it doesn't cut any ice with me. Because what they're saying is the Quran is not just a verbal thing, it's, a, it's, a, it's an oral thing. Yeah? There's, no, there's been no PhD done that has actually established that the chain of narration is actually authentic. I can't, I can't talk on that. I can't talk on that because my knowledge is very so, limited. So for me, the reason why I believe in Jesus Christ is I believe him personally, I know him personally, he's in my heart, he's changing me. I, my conversion is, uh, I, I was on drugs at the time, I was messed up, and uh, I came home one day and my mum was beaten up and she, she ended up in hospital and I was broken hearted, right? I was broken hearted, it's all right mate. I was broken hearted and I ended up, because my head was messed up, I ended up committing attempted armed robbery. I went into prison and I saw these Christians in prison, no proctor before the, before the uh, Strange Ways riots. And I saw this chaplain and I looked at him and he had something. I thought, I want what he's got. I didn't know what it was, but I could see that he had God. Yeah, so I came out and I started to go to a church. My mum was coming out of the Jehovah's Witness because she realized it was a cult. She said, go to Eddie's church. So I went to this church and these old ladies gave me some books by Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones and Spurgeon, great preachers. I began to read them in this flat in, in Cheetah Mill and I began to be convicted of my sin. And you were talking about hell. I began to realize there was a hell and I was a sinner. And I didn't trust anybody. But I began to trust Jesus that he died for me and that's how I came to know him. And I've gone through difficult times, I've not been perfect. But I've seen God at work in my life and I've seen him change me. And I'm not anti-intellectual, I have a degree from Manchester University in theology. And I study Islam, I, I want to know more of Islam. And, and um, so, and, and atheism, but I believe, I, I can't deny Christ because he's my Lord and Saviour, bro. And, and that's why I'm here and I, and, and I pray, if there is a heaven and if there is a hell, what is the, the rock that we have to stand on? And I'm standing on Christ Jesus. If Jesus, it says in Philippians, every knee shall bow and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I confess him as my Lord and I praise him and I worship him and I adore him and I trust him as my Lord and Savior. And that's why I'm here, bro. And I'm so impressed by you, by your sincerity, by your kindness, by your graciousness, are you a really nice guy? You're a really nice guy. You know what? At you the know? end of the day, I can relate to this. I can relate to the brother's story. Do you know what I mean? Not necessarily similar, but you know, using substances to accept who you are and to make you forget things. You know, not everyone, but you know, I've been through the, I've been through the, that that path as well. And you know, now I'm at peace, man. And you know, for me, that's the main thing. I'm at peace. Life is good. And what I want to do is I want to give my interpretation of heaven and hell. Now people say life is a test and we're here for a reason. Now for me, from an entity, God perspective, he puts us humans here to see good and bad. And then what, this is, this is how I understand and accept it. So there's earth and then there's two other planets, heaven and hell. Yeah, one planet's heaven, one planet's hell. Depending on how we live our life here, whether it's good, he picks us and he puts us on the planet of perfection and the planet of nastiness. And that's how I understand heaven and hell. And maybe, you know, that would help others understand it as well. Because people think, you know, what is it? Is it a realm? Is it this? Is it that? For me to understand it, I've just se separated it into two different planets, a good one and a bad one. And we're here to live good or whoever lives bad. And he picks us apart and then he puts all the perfect and the good ones onto one planet. So we all live in peace where it's not like this. It's not like this world where, you know, there's conflict. In heaven, there's none of that. 
because everybody likewise and similar mind that's my understanding and that's why that's that's what made me understand heaven and hell heaven and hell 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 is separation from god and it's a terrible thing yeah i'm going to tell a quick story a quick story this girl this this girl i just wait. this girl she became a prostitute went to puerto rico her mum was broken hearted went to find her couldn't find her so she left pictures of herself all over the hotels in Puerto Rico. She came home, she was crying, I can't find my daughter, she's a prostitute. A, a daughter came down the stairs with a client, she goes into the toilet, she sees a picture of her mum. She grabs the picture, turns the picture around, and it says this, I don't care what you have done, come home. That is why we're here today. God is telling you today, come home. He don't care what you have done, come home. He's died for you. Jesus has died for you, come home, know his love. Because on judgment day, your good deeds are never gonna be good enough. On judgment day, you need to know that the blood of Jesus covers you. That is Christ's blood that gave his life for you. That is the only thing that will save you, my friend. Otherwise, you will be crushed under the wrath of God. It's the blood of Jesus, my friend. God bless you, man. You know what, it's been beautiful speaking to this brother. I, under, I, understand, I understand his perspective and I'm sure he understands mine. But you know what? We're not, I'm not here today to try bring him down or disprove him or nothing. I just wanted to hear what you had to say. And, hey, man. I mean, hey, it's all good. Yeah, man. It was, it was beautiful, man. Do you know what I mean? Thank you very much.